let us stop antagonizing ourselves. Huh? We cannot develop evil land except when we peace and evil land. So when some of us say preach peace, of course because lying and doing good. But why not do it? If you don't have peace, you never have development. Who will die here? Who will never have evil now? Now, for every weekend, you never have to buy that evil. To buy it by yourself. But you don't have now. You got an evil. Some people do not know is that Alan Onyema came to my house. He visited me. 
and we talked about the zoo and what was happening in the zoo he talked about the consequences of the quick notice the hate speech by the alamajiri those babi ala kids in the north but of course i knew it was their master speaking through them one thing he forgot was that i am a biafran first and foremost and i'm incorruptible he said he wanted to to see how there could be peace at least our people will not be killed in the north and he said to him anything you want to do you can do i'm 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 i too i'm against our people being killed in the north and that was it the next line i heard of course people love taking pictures with me when they see me as you some of you may have gathered he said we should take pictures with the alamajiri he brought with him i can't say no i am an Igbo man i grew up in the village you don't say no to your visitors i said yes i'm take pictures and i started writing rubbish and as soon as he went to bbc and granted them an interview in fact, basically when i read that he said those he rescued from some from south africa were singing a national anthem some of the lazy youths online working for apc descended on ipob saying can you see one of you you claim alan onyema is a biafran he, he was happily singing the national anthem <laughs> i knew his days were numbered and then he gave the interview to bbc where he maligned my person and basically lied against me and that was when i decided that i know more about him than he can ever imagine that was when they decided to move after him So one of them wrote actually online his name is muhammad al haji danjuma i think he came to my house as well with alan today we paid our brother namda kanevis and out of deference my brother Anya and my humble self I agreed to stop any hate speech or action that will promote violence i told you about Fulan. they are the ones that made the hate speech against the Igbos living in the north he came to my house and he's gone back and he's writing that we all agreed to stop any hate speech <laughs> Of course, he said, interestingly, he is for peace. Of course, I am for peace and well-being of every Nigerian, which I am. I have said it many times. I want all of you to be free from the shackles of Fulani hegemony and British neo-colonial slavery. I've said that many times. I want the houses to be free. I want everybody to be free. Do you think I'm looking for Biafra just for my own sake? Of course not. I want people to be free. Because if they're not free and developed, they will all flock to Biafra to come and seek or to come to seek a living. I don't want that. I want people to be developed and to stay in their own land, practice their own culture, their religion, and do whatever they have to do. So I am for peace in that regard. I'm not a terrorist. So why shouldn't I be for peace? So I think um, they misunderstood me. Or deliberately chose to misrepresent my discussions with them and that angered me made me very very upset i am not as an okwana and an afar junja as they say i don't know how to say that in english in my place when you come and you say you have a proposal i will listen people come to prison to see me i listen to them people propose proposals to me was in dss custody i listen to them can't tell you to go away i will always listen to you always but what I will do, or what I always do, remains a secret with me. But to compromise what I stand for and the Biafra struggle for independence is not something I will do. I will be dead ten times over. I have sacrificed a lot and will continue to sacrifice until Biafra is restored. I don't care or mind what people say or do. Alan O'Neill made a very big mistake, very huge one by delving into a topic that is entirely above his station he wanted to please his full and masters by telling them that he had a meeting and a discussion with namdekan and that was a very huge mistake very huge mistake 
A lot of people come to see me in secret that I've not told anyone about. They decided not to publicize it for their own good. He's gone ahead and done so. Knowing fully well that IPOB will rise against him and that we will seek to defend our honor. Now we have done so. The Fulanis have moved against him because they know that IPOB cannot defend somebody who deliberately sought to undermine the effort and integrity of this very noble effort. Alan Onyema is in a very serious mess. Look at him today and the mess he got himself into. The Fulanis, who are the greatest looters we have, they are in charge of EFCC. Ibrahim Lamode, have you forgotten? Look at all the criminal Fulani people. What do they know? They're not educated. They forge certificates, all of them. They get into, they rig themselves into power. Or they appoint themselves into power in a so-called democracy. How many of them have been charged by the U.S. government? <laughs> I want to ask the U.S. Department for Justice or whatever they call themselves. How many of uh, Fulani people have you charged? The time Omar Udiko was in London, Omar Udiko ran away with a mobile bank. Omar Udiko ran away with almost five billion pounds in those days. That money could feed the whole of Africa. Are the children not enjoying the money today? Some of you may be too young to remember a man called Ibrahim Taher. He was the Minister of Communications, a full man. They stole Nitel dry and set the building alight. Nitel building on, in Marina, in Lagos. That's, that was how much money they stole. Umar Dika was Minister for Transport. Remember Akin Loye and his champagne? Akin Loye was importing champagne in his name. Some of you have forgotten all this. These are the looters and the criminals you have. Oh, I was a Fulani. I wouldn't say I was a place. I do apologize to our people. They are Fulani. All of them. By none. Buhari, when he was alive in during the reign of Abacha, was in charge of PTF. How about the 57 suitcases? You've forgotten, haven't you? Buhari was in charge of PTF and he stole it dry because Abacha used it to launder money. You have all forgotten. Nobody's squaring them, nobody's investigating them. Alan Onyem abused the privilege I granted him by allowing him to come into my sitting room to sit down with me to have a discussion. And from there, he felt he could leverage that very encounter to endear himself to the northerners. And they have turned around and rejected him. That is his business. I want to ask the United States Justice Department, how many Fulani looters of the treasury have you indicted? I want to also ask the U.S. Department for Justice and the FBI. Are you not aware that Tinubu was a drug dealer in Chicago? Did you not see the bullion van that went to Tinubu's house on the eve of the elections? Have you charged him? I also want to ask the U.S. Department for Justice if they have not heard about Aisha Buhari and his involvement with Halliburton, the bribery scandal. You've not investigated any of those, but you want to investigate Alan Onyema because he's evil, because he seemed to be successful, and because he went against IPOB egg again which is a lapse in in judgment on his part but let us see how the whole thing plays out we don't we are not a fan of people that indulge in criminality uh, but everybody in the zoo is corrupt especially politicians and those in high office how they make their money is entirely up to them they know how they do it so we see how the whole thing plays out in the next few weeks. I'm not going to get him into any more trouble by asking questions I shouldn't ask at this point in time. But I do believe that he may have learned his lesson by now. 
that no matter how strong you feel, you are close to the Fulani Caliphate, provided you come from Biafra land. All of us, they will come after you. You see, write it down today. You see, Chibi Kamage, one day they will go after him. Write it down on a piece of paper. Write it down and quote me when it happens. That's the way they operate. Aziki will serve them. Look at you. You heard what Aziki was saying. You heard it. Yet in 1979, they didn't vote for him. They didn't vote for him. Because he is a Biafran. And they don't trust him. They have come after many people, haven't they? They came after Ezekiel Izuog. They went after Ibeto. This is after saying we are one Nigeria. Once you come out and say I love Nigeria more than even the Fulani, you're finished. They don't believe you. They don't trust you. Look at the interview of Junaid Mohammed today. Look at what Arawa Consultative Forum are saying. But at the height, I wouldn't say at the height of agitation, in 2015, the whole Arawa came to Enuku for a meeting. They called the stupid Fule Fuzi and Hanese. They attended a meeting together. Uh, let's not uh, uh, let's build Nigeria together. Today they are telling you now they have the power, they have INEC, they have the judiciary, they have the media, they have everybody. They have the 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 the, the, the Senate and House of Reps. They are not telling you to go to hell. All they will say is that the the population of the North is more than the South. So regardless of what regardless of what you do. They are more in number, so they will claim and they'll give themselves victory. And you will for a few days on social media and you go back to buying a liter of petrol, 280 naira. And that'll be it. And when you hear that IPOB is rallying or anything to save you, you take out of frustration and your hopelessness on IPOB when you should direct it against Fulani people. That is how sad our people are. Look at it, Beto. I remember Faneka Yode telling me when we met in Kuji that Ibeto was suffering in EFCC custody. What was his crime? He dared to sell cement like Dangote. America is looking for who to investigate. Let them not anger us because we are watching them. If they escalate this thing tomorrow or day after tomorrow, then we'll all give FBI the names of those to investigate and where their money is. Where they banked all the money that they looted from the zoo. That is something that they must understand. That is something they must know. We are not going to give up. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. We will not surrender Ireland to them. Of course not, we won't. Because as I said before I grew up in the village. So we'll deal with the enemies of our people first and then we'll deal with Ireland later. But right now we are going to defend him. We will defend him. And from tomorrow, we'll give FBI the names of those to investigate. People that actually looted the treasury. And be rest assured that Babangida's name will be there. When we submit your name, we'll also tell them where to find the money that you looted from the treasury. So since FBI is now interested in tackling corruption in the zoo, we welcome them. We welcome them with open arms. We are now going to give them the names of those to investigate. Every Fulani Alamajiri criminal, looter, be rest assured that your names will be going up to FBI and to United States Department for Justice. And if they fail to investigate, if they fail to investigate, then we will make the case that Onyema's case is victimization, a continuation of the economic emasculation of the Biafran people which we will not tolerate some of you will sit at home some will be gossiping but i can assure you that i will be meeting those that matter face to face 
in America discussing these very issues in the next um, few days. So we'll defend Allen, but I'm sure he's learned his lessons. Don't lie against IPOB or myself or else you get yourself into trouble. Don't try the nonsense you pulled next time. And Allen Onyema is the very last amnesty we are going to grant anybody. Any if we live caught up in one Nigeria mess from today onwards, we will not defend that very person unless you identify with Biafra, unless you identify with IPOB. If you don't identify with IPOB and with Biafra, we will not defend you in the future. As simple as that. Then you will bear your cross. It is as simple as that. Innocent, we defended. Ibeto, we tried our best. They pulled down or they tried to frustrate Bath Energy as well. The list is endless. And as one of our brothers wrote very movingly, Agunze Omoka, only a fool would want one Nigeria. Only a fool would want one Nigeria. No sensible person would want one Nigeria. Alan Onyema served the zoo and now has come back with shame that we must defend him. We must defend him because the Alamajri is the hunt in packs. That is something that you must know. The hunt in packs. That is something our people must know. Even Amnesty International released a report accusing those governing or ruling the zoo in the name of Buhari. They accuse them of oppression, intimidation, disregard for the rule of law. Also, the American people will be hearing about this and how much that Abakiari has made. <laughs> they have opened up a can of worms, I'm telling you. Because FBI will investigate, <laughs> is it Yusuf Buhari? What is Buhari's um, son's name? the fourth richest person in africa fbi is going to investigate him and investigate aisha as well we'll make sure it happens you know in in the usa they full they follow due process once the complaint comes in and it is it, it has merit they will investigate so it is not just onyema and <laughs> no Whoever suggested that Onyema should be investigated, you've made the worst mistake of your life. Every Alamajiri, every Fulani, every criminal in the zoo will be investigated, including Tinubu. Everybody. Since they have started, everybody we will supply them with every information they need. So they shouldn't worry. Since FBI wants to come in to double into into i wouldn't say biafra because onyema doesn't even support biafra since they don't want to continue where they stopped where the some parts of the western world left off after 1970 after killing 3.6 million of us you took our money you removed us from every sphere of influence in nigeria and now the few people we have that can afford three square meal in a day you want to destroy their businesses maybe so dangote can float in an airline you destroy the battle dangote is already enjoying monopoly our people don't reason very well they don't want to see any of you as a millionaire they don't want to see us rich they will as, uh, as long as you have your little spare parts shop or you're selling crayfish or you're selling uh, four sticks of um, stockfish in two months they're okay with it so that way you'll be asking for one nigeria clamoring for one nigeria so when they get a new fule for and empower him or her they come to the village all of you be doing rank the fbi fbi rather should prepare for ipob because we have the names of all the looters in the zoo called nigeria they are going to be very busy very very busy indeed we assure them unless they drop the charges if if by tomorrow tomorrow morning 
we see in the Yoruba newspapers, Allen this, Allen that. I saw the headline today from Nation newspaper. They say those that live in glass houses should not throw stones. You don't throw. For Tinubu paper, Tinubu owns Nation. For Tinubu to splash the picture of Allen saying indicted for fraud and corruption. In that USA, we will see Tinubu there as well. We have the resources to mount whatever investigation we like. This is IPOB. So we ask them, the Fulani Caliphate, those in EFCC setting up special panel to probe uh, 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 Allen. No, you will not do that. Allen made a mistake. He messed up. That is true. But uh, he's a Biafran. Are we going to throw him to the wolves to devour him of course not we're not going to do that we can we defend our own as a as a amadu Bele will defend every northerner to the point of not even appointing an Igbo person he said it openly he's not going to appoint an Igbo man i'll appoint a white man so we must learn to defend our own but let me repeat that this is the last time we will do this if you come out again any of you if we if come out again to say one useless thing about Biafra or try to eulogize your one Nigeria or preach one Nigeria if you get into trouble, IEPOB will not defend you again. We go to the issue of the people that is having a referendum because rather very sadly our people don't quite understand the meaning of referendum especially those in the zoo a very small region of Ethiopia have just become autonomous, or should I say independent. And I, when I was contemplating the reason why Ethiopia will grant one of their regions um, the chance to express their will via a referendum, something struck me. That if you, Ethiopia is the only country in Africa not colonized by the West, perhaps they have a different way of reasoning. It is only in the zoo that the media will not tell you that Ethiopians recently held a referendum to create a new state for their sidama minority group as i was saying now i know why ethiopia was not colonized they reason differently compare ethiopia with the british zoo called nigeria and tell me if you cannot see any difference in west africa we love to be enslaved to be submissive to an external force is in our dna can't you uh, do you know why they kept coming to the bite of Biafra to empty people across the whole of West Africa. Whites. Do you know why? Because we are submissive to extent. We only have strength when it comes to your fellow brothers. You have strength and energy. You'll be doing videos morning, noon, and night, writing junk all over the place. When it comes to fighting an external enemy, no, we are not good at it. My question tonight is this why do we love to be slaves why a tiny portion of ethiopia is independent because they all came out and fought for it because we know that independence is a very agitation is a very expensive business of course it is everybody must rise up to make sure that we free ourselves from the bondage called zoo we are the people being sold in libya we are abused all over north africa we are killed in arabia we are dehumanized in europe we are spat upon in america we are imprisoned in asia and we are used as lab animals in south america we are deported from australia yet we have failed to acquire any self-pride or to even look at ourselves as equal human beings to all these people who are dehumanizing us 
we don't like taking risks. But thank goodness for IPOB. Without risk, we cannot be free as a people. Nigerians, or should I say the youths of the shameless British created zoo called Nigeria, are preoccupied with watching Big Brother, gossiping and praising election riggers instead of fighting for their right. They keep copying the lazy Alamajiri lifestyle of the North, the same lifestyle the Fulanis used to render Hausa youths useless. Some of you don't know it, that it was the deliberate policy of the North to stop their people from going to school during the early years of the zoo. To the Nigerian youth, I say to you, your mates are in Hong Kong, in Bolivia, in Honduras, in France and all over the world, fighting for a better life for themselves and their children, but in the zoo, you are placed on 2,000 Naira of data every week by a politician to be gossiping your life away. People are protesting violently all over the world, but the average zoo lazy youth is nonchalant, docile and sheepish. They fight themselves on social media. But tomorrow you will go to the embassy of all these people, all these youths, your age mates, fighting for a better country. Tomorrow you will go to their embassy to, be, to ask, to beg for visa. But when they were busy sacrificing their lives to make their country better, you were busy burning your data on Babcock College sex video and promoting mediocrity. Hailing election rigors and putting your trust in a worthless PVC. And if you tell them to open their mind to the fact that a referendum will happen, they tell you that it is war. Referendum to them is war. They don't know that referendum is a pure demo democratic process through which people decide what happens in their society. Ethiopia is one.